Now, I'm going to do a segue into education. I'm going to make a case to you that education is like retail. Universities have trade areas. So I've mentioned I've done work with the uh, Board of Governors. And I calculated the trade areas of all the universities in the state. And here's just a little sampling. They're, typically, they're about 30 miles for a university like uh, they'll get 80% of their students uh, from uh, around you know, UCF, uh, uh, Florida Atlantic, 80% of their students within about 30 miles. There are several universities that are different and therefore should be treated differently. Uh, one of which is University of Florida. Uh, it is uh, the University of Florida, its trade area encompasses the entire state. It's not a 30 mile trade area. Indeed, it's not a 30 mile trade area. So one of my recommendations to the Board of Governors is, we have a problem in North Central Florida that if you're a very good student, but not an A, not a, a, a 4.5 GPA student, and I, and I grew up in the area, I do not understand what a 4.5 is. You know, we didn't have that type of thing when I was in school. But if, you don't, if you're not a student like that, you're not gonna get into University of Florida. So one of the worst places to reside in the entire state if you want your children to go to a state university uh, that uh, is in within 30 miles of University of Florida. You're not gonna get in. Uh, you might be a, an A student, but you're not an A plus student, sorry. Because you, you have cherry picks the students. Half of them are L1s and L2s. Now you're starting to think, you mean L1s and L2s might be better students? I've seen their data. So education is retail. Uh, it's a, a, a private good, and we know this from economics, a guy named Musgrave and also Paul Samuelson did the pioneer thinking on this, is it's excludable. So if I have this pen and I can say, sorry, you can't use it, and I'm bigger than you. Uh, therefore, I've excluded it from you, or a cup of coffee. Uh, rival, like if I consume a cup of coffee, you can. Goods that are private have to be excludable, otherwise you can't extract a market price for it. What if a good is not excludable? You can't price it. If you can't price it, it's not going to be provided. So public goods are different than private goods. So when you hear a politician that says a government budget is just like a household budget, well, consider that they may not know what they're talking about because it's not. There's a whole lot of differences, particularly between uh, the national government that can print money and uh, also a government is providing uh, goods which are not excludable. So we can exclude people. You can apply to UF, and UF may decline. Sorry, you're not our kind of student. Uh, it's a rival. My classes would fill up. Sorry, there's no more student seats available. That's a private good. Education has historically been place-based, you know, like a brick-and-mortar retail store. You go and, you know, 90% uh, of UF students are coming from elsewhere in the state. So you come to the place to consume your good and service. That sounds like retail to me. It has a trade area. I've shown you that UF has a trade area. It's all to all, all universities and schools and kindergartens and so forth. Uh, and uh, they serve demographic niches. The demographic niche that UF serves is very different than the demographic niche of that I've seen in, in the students at uh, St. Pete College. So what's the difference? It's a, re, it's a private good retail. And also like Chico's and Talbot's, it has a value platform. So when University of Florida, in fact, I, every year for years, I would produce a report for the provost's office with this kind of information. So University of Florida deliberately, and all universities, deliberately create a value platform. 
It's the total shopping experience. And that's what the successful retailer does. Now, not every university in the state should be, you know, trying to emulate U.S. value platform because each has different psychographic profiles of their students. That's treating education like a business. Uh, and we have a degree gap. So here I'm just calculating, let's accept for a moment, which I don't agree with. I mean, let's all remember that Bill Gates didn't graduate from college. And uh, for the, I've just finished a report that I've been working on for the past year on education for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So, uh, you know, they're aware of what these ideas are. It may be that it's not, they're not ready to adopt because uh, we're low on the logistic S curve. But I'm here as an agent of diffusion, like the flu, sorry, or something positive, where I'm transmitting <laughs> concepts to you to adopt. That's what we do in higher education in particular. So what does, what do professionals say? And I do not want to characterize myself as, you know, the professional educator. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just a geographer. Uh, the uh, Chronicle of Higher Education says, the coming meltdown in higher education. This is what's happening. This is Schumpeter creative destruction. So I don't agree with all that Governor Scott is doing uh, for the reasons what he's doing. But on the other hand, I believe there's a lot of necessary good in what Governor Scott is doing. And I'm saying this as a professional educator. It's creative destruction. By throwing more money at education, all you're doing is your belief is that it's going to be a straight line, and all it needs is more money. Throw more money at it. Uh, and I said, no, it's not a straight line. And Bill Gates, here it is, Wall Street Journal, Bill Gates said, you know, uh, we have spent with Warren Buffett five billion dollars, uh, different kinds of education from kindergarten to universities and so forth. And what have we come up with? Uh, we as a foundation see that we have to think differently. And I say to them in my report, maybe we ought to be thinking of higher education in particular, but all education, like a business. Boy, you've heard that mantra before. And there's a lot of reasons why this is important to you in real estate. And I'll get to that in a moment. Here's the proof. So I did this with a colleague that is, uh, was the chair of the program of counselor education at University of Florida. And I came across him completely serendipitously. I mean, this has not been a, an interest of mine. And then we both engaged in the same hobby on weekend. We would have breakfast together. And he said, Grant, if I, you know this data stuff. And well, yeah, a little bit. And he said, if I can get standardized test scores for students uh, at longitudinal, you know, across time and through grades, uh, can you analyze that like you do your other stuff? I said, well, I'll give it a try. And so I went to work on it. And a couple weeks later, I came up with this graph. Now, what this graph is, is that I found that just like I could predict blockbuster entertainment purchases before a retail door was opened, I could predict the performance and achievement of a student, of a classroom, of a school building before they even took an exam. So in politics, you hear it's the teacher, it's the teacher. Sorry, uh, and, and I'm saying this as a teacher. <laughs> a teacher, you know, we all have favorite teachers. I had a lot of favorite teachers when I was in school. I was very fortunate. I just loved a lot of my teachers. Uh, but when it comes down to it, we in econometrics say they're, they're a random error in the regression equation. 
It's the psychographics. It's the values of the household. And all teachers will tell you, we know that. Let's just do a laser thing here. If it did, it doesn't now. Uh, on the axis going to your upper left are these lifestyle segmentation <coughs> profile tapestry categories. And what that means is that people within one of those categories, like analysis of variance, they consume more like one another than they do people in other categories. It's not about race and it's not about income, it's about consumption. These category ones are like kind consumers. Categories two, are, and they're not better people. Categories two are like kind consumers. Consumption reveals one's values. Is that, am I making a heroic statement? If you see how I consume, then you know what kind of values that I have. So let's say from the president's administration, my household receives a check for $1,500. I spend that $1,500 $1, on designer tennis shoes for the kids or for a computer and internet access. That reveals your values. I'm not saying one set of values is bad or one is good, but they're different. And retailers know this, and they design their value platform based upon the different values. Now, statistically, these red ovals here, they represent those categories, lifestyle segmentation profiles one and two are statistically the same in Florida standardized exams. Uh, and we can track them, how they progress through the school years. We have standardized exams here in Florida from grade three to 10. And we have standardized, and then we see on the lower left uh, category eights. So if I know that you're an eight, it doesn't mean that you're definitely going to be a poor performer. It just means that, you know, the likelihood of you achieving, in fact, we can even predict with less than a three and a half percent error when you're gonna drop out of school. It's not income. It's not race. And we've done the experiments. We said, well, uh, I read in the newspaper, oh, the black people, they're doing so poorly in education in Florida. And they are. But once you standardize by psychographic profile, there is no difference between a black and a white standardized by psychographic profile, or a Hispanic, or an Asian. All people are basically the same. What differs is the values. And at University of Florida, at University of Florida, we have students of all kinds of nations, all kinds of races and ethnicities and so forth. But once you standardize for psychographics, lifestyle segmentation profiles, they're all the same student, men and women. They're the same. And then you look at other universities and, and they're different. And so you have a marketing pitch. How do you reach those different students? Uh, and what's the problem with not targeting based upon this? Well, we know who you are and where you are and what your receptivity is to the value platform that's been standardized. The standardization of the value platform is based upon you being in those categories on your upper left. Let's say you're not there. The further deviant you are, and I don't mean deviant, that standard deviation from that. Predictably, the less well you're going to perform, why? Because bad teachers? No, it's because the value platform isn't designed for you. That's our problem. And so when we look at a degree gap, an education gap in Florida, uh, and we need to look at this for continued economic development of the state, we can't rely upon old people anymore because we have intervening opportunities in Tennessee and elsewhere. Uh, we've got to diversify our economy. And by throwing money at education is not gonna do it. And I'm not saying don't throw money at education. Uh, and Governor Scott says don't throw money at anthropologists. And you know, I may agree with that too. But it's how you throw your money is important and what you do. 
And we're going into a transition, like Greg told us about, with Eratopolis, where you may not even have to uh, go in to campus. A professor may not have to go into campus. My students want to talk to me, I say, well, give me a Skype at 9 o'clock. And, uh, and have your PowerPoint ready. And we'll go over your stuff. So I'm a believer in education. I'm also a believer in schumpetering, destructive, creative equilibrium. That education must change. And that doesn't mean bash the teachers. Be fortunate that people are willing to work for those incomes. It means change education and make it like a retail. Uh, uh, Pacific Heights. That's where I ultimately grew up. So if I know somebody is a Tapestry 11, I can predict what their achievement is going to be. Uh, therefore, you know, if you're a believer in Richard, Florida, you may say, well, what are we going to do? What's a, I, I gave a talk at the Chamber of Commerce in Polk County. And, and the previous year, I didn't know that, know that for their uh, uh, annual meeting. And they had Richard Florida there. And so they asked me uh, what I thought their future was. And I said, well, it was a suburb between uh, Tampa and Orlando. And they said, no, that's not what we want. We want somehow spontaneous combustion to occur here to invent the new microchip. Well, your psychographic profiles at the present time in Polk County say that's an unlikely future. And we'll go through where the likely futures are. But today I can enumerate. I've got the marginal propensity to consume by household. I know what the culture is. We put that UF released a study on our work and then it even reached the, the blog that the national politicians go into. I've never seen a study before that actually proves, you know, what teachers believe. DTE, direct target education. We have personalized medicine. Florida Trend, we have personalized information. Why don't we have personalized education? Designed like a retailer to my psychographic profile. You want to have economic development of Florida? You want to have uh, the biggest bang for the buck? That's what you must do. And I will give you no choice. That's it. We know how to create a value platform in retail. Go to International Drive in Orlando. You'll see pads owned by Darden Restaurant, Olive Garden, Red Lobster. And they'll try out a, a product, a value platform. And, and maybe, the, the, maybe it is uh, China Coast. And they just can't get it right. They say there's no market for uh, corporate Chinese food in the, in the United States. And so they shut down China Coast. Oops, along comes PF Chang's. Anyway, I uh, got that one wrong. So you, you try out a value platform, you reiterate it, and you see what works. And then once you know what works with the particular demographic profile, because they know the demographics of their population to the Zip Plus 4 level, and now with cell phones, even to the cell phone level, we know where you're going, what you're shopping, what you're doing, and we even have machines that can see where your eyeballs are looking when you go into a store. <laughs> this is direct marketing. That's the level of granularity that we're at. Retailers know it, so the whole industry is changing. And the retail pad is changing. That is, those of you in commercial real estate. The housing sector is changing, as uh, Greg said. So I created this map based upon the percentage of the uh, core-based statistical area that, were, that are predicted to be based upon our model, and we've calibrated it many, many times. 
And in fact, it's even patent pending our algorithm today, uh, which I hope is uh, decided shortly. Uh, the, uh, another crossover here, the, uh, or spin-offs of the type of stuff Euclid does. Uh, power of location-based knowledge. This is where we're predicting. If you believe in economic growth because of smart places, where are the smart places? We know who the innovators are. We know what their lifestyle segmentation profiles are. You say, well, what about Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs, I mean, he was an orphan. The poor guy, right? That's what we're led to believe. The guy grew up in the shadow of Stanford University. Okay, so it's the values of the place that's important. Uh, okay, my parents had very humble circumstances. I grew up in the shadow of Caltech. So watch Big Bang Theory on TV, that's me. And then I worked at Caltech through my undergraduate years. Had wonderful mentors there. So it's the transmission of values by the place that counts. Oh, and, and of course Bill Gates, you know, his, his family were part of the power elite of Seattle before he became Bill Gates, you know. Uh, so here it is in Florida. These are where the uh, uh, highest density of, uh, uh, we'll call them champions are. Probability of being an education champion. And here we have Alachua County. I know where they are at the micro level in Alachua County on the left, the red area. And on the right area, we have, I have uh, these uh, pie diagrams where if it's yellow, it's a high probability of not being successful, and the red being a probability of being successful based upon the demographic category. So what do we do in, in Alachua County? We do a game of shell, you know, the shell game. So we'll have students from that red area and we'll spend half the education budget on busing them over into the yellow area. And so their scores are based upon where they are in school in the yellow area. And then suddenly, miraculously, the, the administrator has changed a failing school into a, a school that's got a BRA waiting. I mean, that's shell game. That's not improving education. And now 50% of your budget goes on transportation. What if you're a teacher? This is in North Central Florida. So we're up looking at Lake City uh, at the, uh, just south of the confluence of the interstates and toward Tallahassee in the west and toward Jacksonville in the east. And, What's the probability of somebody being a star there? I mean, it's all yellow. But let's say you're a teacher there. What are you going to do? Based upon, you know, a metric that, you know, if your students don't achieve a certain score, then you're not going to get a salary increase. So, sorry, that's the way we do things in Florida. Uh, my. Uh, colleague in this, he was asked to evaluate a school, high school. So he went in there and we, we looked at the, we knew what the psychographics were of the school, but he had state directions to follow. The school was, was a failure. We knew the school was a failure based upon the psychographics of the students. My colleague had to fail the school, but he knew why the school was failing. Future demographics driving economic opportunities. So these are the core base statistical areas that are the top 10. And, uh, and, I, and I'll just show you that we have, I produce for your benefit rankings by zip code. So these are the champion zip codes uh, based upon this patent pending algorithm in the state. Uh, and, uh, and what I've done is that I've use my geographic information system technology that you have available on site to do business. I've used that to add up the number of people between the ages of 15 and 35. They're our future. And 
So we know what the likelihood is of a place having leaders of the future that are of these categories. And we know what the total is in the state. Now, I haven't done a comparison of, of Florida versus other states, but could do that. Or you can do that. You can replicate what I've done. Uh, so Governor Graham says, uh, I criticize uh, Scott and the uh, state legislature for cutting the budget. And as a professor, I love, I love this. I love being an educator, and I have personally benefited from it. And so I wanted to pay back, and I still do. Um, but you know, maybe this isn't a bad thing. Maybe this forces us to step back and think. In ten years' time, is our kindergarten through PhD system going to be the same as it is today? Today, now, why? Another reason why this is relevant for those of you in real estate, you know what we do. We, we, we create traffic generators with other people's money. And, and that's what we do. And, and it's the way it's been always done. Uh, Caltech came about because the developers of Pasadena wanted to create a traffic generator there. That's okay. So it became, same with the Rose Parade. It was to suck people out of the Midwest at, at, uh, on New Year's Day. And it worked. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast University, same thing. So, you know, this is not unusual. Uh, in Memphis, where I was last year as a visiting scholar, uh, the education people said, what are we going to do? Uh, our schools last only 10 years. We build a school, nice subdivisions are built around them, and then 10 years later, the subdivisions have declined, and, and the school's no good anymore, and we've got to spend another $45 million. What's our solution? I said, well, are you in the education business or in the real estate development business? Stop building schools, okay? Look at alternative, they, the households will look at alternative means of delivery. Uh, Doug Sawyer and I have been talking about ways to deliver information in CCIM. Uh, and this, what it does is say you've got to design your value platform to your audience so that they will be successful. So don't focus on metrics. Uh, the focus should be on the process, the value platform, the content delivery, and what you want to achieve at the end. <clears throat> Creative destruction, that's the era that we're in. And that may be good, in the, I think it's good in the long run, for our nation to, and our state to be internationally competitive. Thank you. Take a ten-minute break and yes, then sir. come back for the uh, panel session. Okay. Uh, let me make an announcement too, just for a minute. You know, Grant, it'd be nice to have someone up here that really is passionate about this uh, subject. You know. Anyway, we're going to have some fun the next, um, you know, the next uh, hour, ten-minute break, and. Uh, Thank you.